there. So today I'm going to do a super quick tutorial on how to use Heroku's uh, config bars. So there's configuration variables. So what I've done is I have created this super short script, uses Express. All it does is it sets this uh, constant variable keyword to apples. And then when you go to the local host and you get main page, it just sends you back that keyword. And you've, if you've used the Roku before, which you all have, uh, you have, you remember that one of the things that you have to do is you have to set your port equal to this uh, process.env.port or whatever number. And this number, it doesn't matter because this is what's going to happen locally. But this guy right here is what's super important to get your app to work on Heroku because what it does is it looks at the processes, processes, that's a process, uh, apostrophe S, processes environment, and it looks for an environment variable called port. If it doesn't find one, then it uses this default. So when we run this locally, we don't have any process, um, any environment variables. So it goes ahead and it runs with the default. But when we're running this on Heroku, because Heroku is going to assign a unique port to our application, we want to make sure that we go ahead and have this set up. So this, you've actually already used uh, config bars before. This is an example of a config bar. It's just one that we cannot set. So let me go ahead and run this app so you can see what it's doing. Uh, so I already have it running here. I can restart it. And if I go into my localhost 1337, you can see, like I said, it just sends back that keyword. So this is a little bit of a silly example because, in, you know, why are we setting this keyword and then, you know, just sending it back to the user. Uh, but the, the point of this example is to show you how to use, like I said, those configuration variables. So many instances, you might be doing something like writing down a password, right? So for example, when you're querying a database, in order to make that connection, you need to have your uh, username and your password. And you don't want, want you don't want to have that lying around in your code. You want to make sure that that's set up as a configuration variable because if anyone gets their hands on your code, you want to make sure that they don't have access to any information that they shouldn't have access to. So again, for an example is if you're querying a database and you're setting, uh, you have to give your username and your password or the IP address or the host, those are all things that you can set up as configuration variables and the setup is going to be exactly the same as I'm gonna show you here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Heroku. I'm going to have to create a new application and I'll call this config bars example. Hopefully you're familiar with all of these steps already. So I'm gonna go ahead and Stop my server. The only time you do this get init is when you're creating a new repository. So this folder is brand new. Uh, after you've done, created a repository, you no longer have to do these settings. You just have to do the deploy your application. I've seen a lot of folks um, redoing this over and over. You don't have to do this once you've already done it the first time. I've also seen a lot of people writing the same uh, commit message, make it better. This message is for yourself to see. It's in case something happens, in case you break your code and you want to go back to a previous version, having comments that actually make sense that tell you what version this is, is very helpful. Uh, and then get push.
Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and open the app. It should just say apples and it says apples. But again, what if this password, what if this were a password, right? And obviously I wouldn't be just displaying a password to my user, but let's say that it was a password and I didn't wanna just have it hanging around in my code. I wanted it to be somewhat secure and stored as an environment variable. So what I would do then is set up a new, config a new configuration variable and it's gonna start with this uh, same part here, the process.env. So I'm gonna go process.env and by default, it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't need to be capitalized, but by default, it usually is. So I'll do that. Now this doesn't actually currently exist on Heroku, so I need to go ahead and create it. So what you do is you go to your app, you go over to overview, not overview, uh, one of these settings, settings, reveal config vars. Okay, there we go. It's under settings, reveal config vars, then this opens up. And what you'll do is you'll set up the name this case we're going to call it keyword and the value in this case is apples again in your case you'll probably do something like database username or database password and then put the value so you go ahead and you say add you can go ahead and hide those again so that they don't show up if someone you know is looking on your over your shoulder you can have those hidden which is really nice and then you're going to have to deploy your code again because you changed your code so Again, when we are updating code, we don't have to do the get init or the Heroku remote. We just have to do the git add and the dot just adds the entire directory. Really, we only change one file, so that's the only file we wanna add, but this is shorter. And then the message I'm gonna say is added config var, so I can spell it. And then I'm going to git push Heroku master and we're going to wait for that to load and so if this works i should be able to refresh my app and it still says apples so let's take a moment and wait for this to finish loading all right now let's go ahead and refresh this and it's still apples. And to confirm that it's working, something that we can do is we can we can change this really quick, right? So let's go back to our settings, review config vars. Let's make this, edit it. Let's make it pineapples. And this is good because if you have your code already and for whatever reason you end up having to change the username or change the password, you don't have to deploy your entire app again you can just change the configuration variables here. So it also makes it much, much easier to update your code. So now if we refresh this, it's pineapples. And we see we didn't have to deploy any code because the actual functionality of our application is exactly the same. The only thing that changed is that configuration variable. So again, to summarize, configuration variables you want to use for things that you want to be hidden, that you don't want to be visible in your code per se. You go to settings, you click reveal config vars, you can add as many configuration variables as you like. As you good practice, making the key uh, or the, the variables name capitalized is something that is usually done. You can set the value to anything that you'd like and then you can go ahead and click config vars. All right, hope that was helpful.